Hi everybody, Angela Fair here. Today I thought it would be fun to talk to you about uh, what goes into planning one of my online watercolor courses. And uh, I don't release them super often. There's a lot of work that goes into planning a course and I just thought you'd enjoy getting a glimpse of it. it it's funny because every time I finish a new course, I feel like uh, I've just given every all the information I possibly could and there's just no way that I'll ever be able to top this course or find new information to share in a future course. And so I always think each course that I do is, is kind of my last course until I find some other new idea. And, uh, and yet it usually works out that a week or two after I finish a course or after the course launch uh, and I start getting feedback from students uh, it, and, and working on my own paintings in the studio because uh, that always sparks new ideas as well. And so, yeah, then I just start getting ideas for a new course and just new stuff that I can't wait to develop and uh, ideas work out and share. So your feedback is really important to me because it's the comments that I hear from students, it's the emails I get, uh, comments on my YouTube videos, um, even just things I hear said in watercolor online forums. Those are all things that kind of spark me to, to think about, you know, how can I teach to that issue? And uh, in my newest course, which was Lovely Loose Florals and Watercolor, the phrase that was really niggling at me, was really bothering me, was all these people who say, oh, I love loose painting in watercolor, but I just can't paint loose in watercolor. And uh, that bugs me because it's like, well, I don't really think it's true. I think we all can paint loose in watercolor. We all know how to wet a piece of paper and just drop color on and have uh, this, you know, splashy mess, but it's the painting loose, painting stuff loose that uh, people were having trouble translating a loose painting into, uh, you know, a loose wash of something into an actual painting. And so I wanted to, I really wanted to work out some, some techniques and strategies for taking, you know, really loose, splashy, this isn't a painting of anything, and then uh, work it into, let's slowly transition into painting actual stuff. And so we applied that, uh, in my course, I applied it to painting flowers, uh, thus the title Lovely Loose Florals and Watercolor. And so we use actually, you know, I, that was the idea there was just to help kind of bridge that gap between painting uh, really controlled uh, and yet wanting to paint looser and uh, helping students to giving them the tools, maybe some strategies to do that. And uh, so when I have a course idea, then of course from there it's, uh, working, figuring out how to teach to that concept and how to, uh, how my lesson structure should go. And so I put together a, a very loose outline. I have usually an idea of the size of the course, so how many lessons it's going to contain and then how to structure those lessons so they build on each other. And with my lovely loose florals and watercolor, I started actually with the working title of abstract florals and watercolor and I changed it because um, it wasn't really quite as abstract as, I didn't want people to think abstract as in we're going to have two blobs of color and it's going to not look like anything and we're going to say, oh yeah, it's a flower. You know, I wanted something that was definitely floral but still very loose. And uh, so we, I changed the title and uh, of course that's my prerogative, it's my course. And, uh, so, and I always find that a course, when I, when I start with one idea, um, the course kind of has its own little life uh, as I'm teaching. I start with those lessons that I planned out and then uh, as the course grows, it kind of matures into something that was more than what I expected. And uh, so just, oh, even though the size of the course is the same as my original plan, the content kind of evolved and grew as I worked on the, on the course. Uh, just and then and then just once that course concept is, is created in my outline then I can go right into filming and I set up my studio for um, for painting and uh, for filming actually and that involves you know not just having my painting stuff out but getting the camera and the microphone and the lighting and uh, my table gets very full and crowded I prep a bunch of paper so I have sheets that are the right size to kind of fit in the camera area and uh, and then I have to plan to record when during the day when the light is good. And especially if I'm recording in the winter, I have very limited amount of time because here in Northern Canada, uh, we have very short days in the winter. So then I have to really plan my day so that I can be in the studio when the light is good enough to get a good quality recording. 
and I'm always trying to tweak the light and make it a little bit better. And uh, so, yeah, once the setup is, is set up in the studio, then I can start filming. And I've learned to expect that my very first few videos are going to be complete crap. And uh, sometimes that just means they, they just look so clumsy as I'm painting a demonstration. I'm thinking this doesn't look like something an instructor would make. Sometimes uh, I hear myself talking and explaining the concept and I think, I'm boring myself. How can I teach this as a class? And so I scrap it all and try to think of a new angle, a new way to approach the subject so that I have uh, interesting content. And of course, uh, I want to still teach the same techniques, but I want to find a way so that it engages the student and, uh, and isn't the same as maybe a previous lesson uh, in a different course as well. And uh, so, you know, I expect those first few lessons to be kind of a write-off until I get into the flow of recording. I start to find my pace and, uh, you know, the course starts to fit what my expectations are. And, uh, and that can be a lot of fun as, uh, you know, after those first couple bad lessons come together, then it usually seems like they'll have one where everything's kind of magical. And that really gives me the, the kind of the jammer where, that I can build my course around. So, you know, one really strong lesson helps me um, create uh, lessons that frame and support it. And uh, sometimes when I, when I set up that original course outline, uh, I'm, I'm going into kind of an easy place for me. And so I'm um, teaching stuff that I've been doing for years. And so I, you know, I've taught it many times in my own home studio. And then uh, sometimes that's where the boring comes in and I start to realize, you know what, I've done this so many times this way. Let's shake it up so I'm challenging myself as well as, um, you know, trying to teach a new concept to my students. And so sometimes that's a little bit of a scary thing to do, to be, you know, here's content I'm presenting that I'm not 100% sure this little exercise is going to turn out because, uh, yeah, I'm challenging myself as well but there's some really interesting dynamics that happen when I'm teaching that way. And I think that's one reason my lessons can be so much fun is because I'm coming at it, uh, I'm teaching, but I'm also experimenting. And I'm hoping that gives my students the feeling that they can be free to experiment. And uh, experimenting is really a really fantastic way to learn. When you're sitting in your comfort zone, not trying new stuff, you're not gonna be growing. Uh, once my lessons are filmed, and I usually do that in two or three batches, so I'll do several lessons, then I'll film them, and then I'll take them into the house to the computer at home uh, and edit. And uh, that involves deleting excess footage, um, and trying to edit out all my little snifflings and sneezings because uh, there's always some place where I, uh, yeah, where I had a runny nose or whatever, and, and I try not to have that left on the video, uh, allergies. And, uh, and then there's usually some spot where the kids march in and they're asking for cookies. And, and so I have to stop and, and try to scrounge up some food for my family. And uh, so, you know, that all has to get edited out after my filming. Uh, I like to try to add captions uh, when I can, if I've forgotten to mention the name of a painter, or um, if I wanna show my reference photo, that all has to go in after filming as well. And I also try to really look for any gaps. Sometimes there might be a place where, oh my goodness, I forgot to turn the camera on and there's this whole section of the painting that didn't get filmed. And uh, then I have to be very creative. Do I start over and do that lesson over or do I just repaint that section or from that section on toward the end of the painting? So, uh, you know, you gotta figure out where the mistakes are and then figure out uh, the best way to fix them. And uh, once the lessons are put together, they all get uploaded and, uh, organized into course content and then once that is done or as I'm doing that I'm also starting to think about what it's going to look like when I launch this course when I share it with my students and give them the opportunity to enroll and, and take the lessons and uh, launch course launch is important to me because uh, no matter how great the course is if I haven't explained that to my students to you guys then you're not going to want to take the course so it's really important to me to be clear in what you're going to expect when you take this course and uh, with lovely loose florals I tried to make the title fairly self-explanatory which is very helpful but I also offered a companion video uh, something on YouTube that would kind of demonstrate uh, some of the content they could expect in the course without giving away all that content for free of course 
And, um, and then in addition to the companion video, I did a live broadcast. And I'm always battling technical issues when I do a live class and trying to do those better. And I'm not able to offer them very often, but it's so cool to uh, engage live with my students and see them chatting in the sidebar and coming up, uh, tuning in from all over the world. So that's always really fun. And, uh, and then finally, uh, making sure that I'm communicating well in my email newsletter. And actually my email newsletters are really important to me. I send them out every week and um, I have several thousand students on my email newsletter list. And I really work hard to offer uh, good content in that newsletter. I don't want people to feel like they're being sold to, that this is just my opportunity to give them a sales pitch every single week, but I'd rather um, offer really good content and be generous with what I've learned and what I know. And uh, so that might mean offering you know, free links to uh, information they can use, whether it's information I'm sharing or from other artists. Um, of course, offering uh, occasional promotions on my courses for once in a while. And um, just being as, as generous like, as I can with my content, sharing new YouTube videos as they come up so that students know about those and uh, just continuing to give back to, or connect with my watercolor community. Uh, one thing I, I really feel like, you know, with the internet, you have to be kind of creative in having relationships with people who are all over the world. And uh, I love that through uh, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and, and through my emails and my website that I can connect with some really great watercolorists out, uh, out in the world and uh, just connect with you guys and uh, feel like we can trust each other a little bit. And I really want my students to feel like they can trust me that what they're getting in my newsletter is a really good reflection of what they might get in, a, in an online course. And, uh, and of course, I've always offered a, a 30 day 100% refund, no questions asked if, uh, if my course doesn't meet a student's expectations. Uh, again, because I want you guys to trust me and, and feel like you're getting uh, you know, you're we're dealing with a real person here, uh, someone who I think very hard before I fork over my hard earned money to take a course from from an artist I respect. And uh, I, know, I know you guys are doing the same. And the fact that you trust me with your watercolor instruction is a huge honor. And I really appreciate it. It's meant a lot for me to be a part of the very first World Watercolor Month, and that's this July 2016. And as we are in our last week of July, uh, I'm looking at my, my course listings. I've sold 179 courses as of today, uh, July 25th, and that means I'm, I'll be donating $179 to the Dreaming Zebra Foundation to provide kids with, school, with uh, art supplies so that they can explore their own creativity. And, uh, you know, with limitless potential for kids, uh, especially when they have great supplies to use. So uh, I'm excited about that. I'd love to see that number pop up. I'd like to hit 200 or $300. Uh, and I know there's only a week left, so 300 seems a little bit far away. But at the same time, I'm just excited about uh, hitting that 200 and pushing it even farther if we can. So uh, any course you purchase this month, uh, I donate a dollar to the Dreaming Zebra Foundation. And uh, again, thank you for, for supporting me. Thank you for supporting World Watercolor Month and Dreaming Zebra. And uh, thank you for being part of this really generous network of watercolor lovers. I love seeing you guys support each other in the student gallery and my Facebook group, uh, Angela Fair Watercolor Workshop. Uh, the things you say to each other to encourage each other in your watercolor journeys on there, uh, I just love it because it's so important to me to love em embrace your journey as uh, as you grow as a, a watercolor artist as you progress and paint to love the process to own where you're at without feeling guilty and uh, and then to be generous with uh, what you've learned and what you have to offer to others uh, just by supporting each other it's really fantastic and uh, just thank you very much uh, thanks for just tuning in and listening to a little bit about my process I'm excited to be planning new courses all the time. There should be a new one coming out this fall. And uh, still a few little baby ideas that I'm toying with before I narrow it down to a, to a concept and start filming. But uh, I'm excited about it because I think it's gonna be, well, it's always, it's always special to me. I grow my skills when I teach you guys and uh, love doing it. And uh, can't wait to see what comes out of each course, uh, not just from you guys, but from myself as I explore and grow as an artist myself.
So thank you. Enjoy your painting journey and uh, share this with a friend if you think that uh, maybe it'll encourage them or uh, help motivate them to just love their watercolor journey as well.